If you're looking for a remote software development job, these are the things you have to look out for. In this video, I want to give you a quick overview of things to consider if you're choosing between different remote jobs or if you're just on the lookout and trying to figure out which companies and which jobs are real remote jobs and uh, good remote working opportunities. So the following questions act as a guideline if you're looking into software and tech remote working possibilities. You can ask them at interviews or you could try to research them yourself on the internet. First of all, you should try to find out what the remote working culture is in those companies. Since when are they doing remote work? And especially, what percentage of employees is working remotely? If um, only a very small percentage of employees is working in a remote location and uh, the big majority is in one big office or a couple of big offices around the world, chances are that you'll have a pretty hard time working remotely because you are the exception, so to say, and people have to accommodate you because you're dialing in remotely uh, and people have to think about you and in reality what happens a lot is that remote workers uh, are not thought about. They're being forgotten because they're just not there every day. But you also could try to find out if there is some sort of a dedicated remote person. For example, there was a good blog entry on Stack Overflow and Stack Overflow, they have a couple of offices, I think one main office in New York, but a big majority of their workers is working from a remote location. So they have one employee who is only working for the remote people and managing their needs, looking after them and trying to figure out what they need to be as productive as possible. Another very important thing to consider is if you get support for financial immigration and tax issues because this is something that will come up at the very beginning of your job with this new company. And it can be pretty complicated to find a space where you can work in and what business structures you have to register in your country um, and what the tax implications are. So whenever they can offer you somebody, it can be somebody from the company or also some you know, uh, contractor, whenever they offer you something like that, that's a very good sign. Now let's get into the more work-related issues. You could, for example, ask how the company handles people calling in to meetings from a remote location. Especially dangerous are situations where you have a couple of people in a meeting room uh, in an office and then you have two or three people calling in remotely. Those people at the same location will lead the meeting. And it's going to be even worse if those people dialing in remotely um, don't see their faces or if they don't see your face if you're calling in remotely. So what you want to hear is that you have a policy or the company has a policy so that everybody has to dial in with their laptop and that they care about the quality of audio and video when doing those calls. And then the same goes for other collaboration tools like email or chat, group chat and project management tools like Kanban boards or Scrum boards. So if you're an agile developer and that team works in an agile fashion, you need a digital Scrum board. So if they're still doing their sprints on some sort of a physical Scrum board in the office, that's something that has to be, has to be changed immediately because you can't be the outsider. If you're the outsider in the Scrum team, you're having a hard time. It's not as fun as you want to and it's just making you less productive because you don't see the same sprint and the same issues as your uh, peers do. So having a good project management software in place, which is being used by everybody on their computer and synchronized over the internet, that's a good thing. Now, other than that, there's also the discussion about what chat tools to use. Because you want to be um, messaging and pinging your people without you know, having to call them all the time or sending them emails. Um, communication should be very spontaneous and very fast. Another very interesting part besides chat and video communication 
is seeing each other's face from time to time. If you're sitting in a real physical office, you see your colleagues sitting there, you see what they're doing, you have small, you know, small talk with them and you can go to lunch or, or even dinner with them. If you're working remotely, that's a lot harder to do, of course. So what companies like Buffer did um, is they use a software which you can activate on your laptop and it takes a photo of you, of you with the webcam sitting there every one, two, three or five minutes. So you have this big screen in front of you where you have a photo of all the team members sitting there and working. And that's just so that you know that that person is at this moment on your laptop, uh, on his laptop. And if you need to communicate with them, you just click on their picture and it starts an instant video chat with them. So this is one form of replicating real world office atmosphere. And when it comes to video and audio communication between people and also between people in remote locations, having a language barrier because people are from all over the world and having bad audio is the worst scenario possible. So it's can, it can be expensive and companies know that, but having really good audio in meeting rooms and also really good audio, like really high quality microphones for employees sitting in remote locations is absolutely vital. So that's also something you could ask because MacBook or laptop microphones are pretty okay as long as you're sitting directly in front of it and there is no background noise. But as soon as you have an office or an, a, a public location and you're maybe working in a co-working space and you have people walking around or you have multiple people in front of one laptop, audio gets horrible. Now let's talk about the more fun part of work. If somebody offers you a remote position, they should have some sort of plan of when to see you in person. So that can mean they will fly you in uh, in your first one or two weeks for some sort of onboarding. But that could also mean that they have once or twice a year um, some company retreat where they either fly in everybody to their headquarters or they pick and choose a location for every year and they fly in all the employees to that location. So those companies re company retreats, they should be for team binding and general strategy. Mainly they're not being used for actual work uh, at those locations. But the social parts of work shouldn't stop there. Even if they fly you out to a location once or twice a year, um, it's not enough to see people only once in a year. You should have more after work contact with them, even if it's just for half an hour drinking a beer over Skype or something like that. So it doesn't have to be connected to drinking, but it's just something where you can bond over topics which are not work related. And if you're in an office uh, in the same physical location, that just happens naturally. If, you're have, if you have people working remotely, um, you, you need to have a plan for this to work. And lastly, what you could also try to find out about is how the company supports you with your workspace at home or maybe your workspace in something like a co-working space. So if you decide to work from home, are they going to pay for good office supplies like a really good chair, um, a standing desk, um, your computer equipment, visual, video and audio equipment? And stuff like that and if you decide to work from somewhere else so for example like a co-working space are they gonna pay or maybe pay in parts for your place or your desk there if you like this video please subscribe to this channel and if you want to be the first to know about new video ideas and having more of a conversation with me then follow me on twitter i'll put the handle down below in the description my name is roman lopez and this is success in tech